Okay, let me know when the Twitch starts working. Can you hear me from here? I think it can. It should be able to. Um, we're using his. Also, there's a YouTube link that doesn't have a mic in. Oh, Brandon, could you post the links to the Twitch and the YouTube and Discord? And also, check if the YouTube is working at all. Oh, if this room was any more to what we have now. Panic attack. It's okay. I mean, I'm not surprised. It's project management. Yeah, exactly. Like, by all means, it's one of the most important things to learn. But, what are you going to do? Uh, Alright, hold on. So in like a minute you're gonna hear this and like me saying this. Is this how much well actually you can start projecting? So like do you want me to talk about this volume? Like, uh I mean whatever volume like comes I mean, up. Okay, so like I'd be talking about this loud. Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah. yeah right. So mute that so that doesn't happen. I guess I'll have to. Try it from the center because it sounds already. Right? Something. 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 Testing. Something. Good. Alright, sweet. Okay, it's a little bit quieter, but it's. Gotcha. We'll power through it. Attenuate your voice to your distance. Okay. Um, should we just start? Yeah, I'll start. Yeah. Okay. Should I start recording too? Or? We're like 25 minutes late, so. <laughs> you want me to record? Probably start. No, we can end late. That's not, I mean, this is usually how we record that. Um, hello. Can I? All oh, right. Please, go and on. How do I operate this? Okay, move, move the mouse. Uh, well, you gotta, it's that way. Oh, it's that way? Okay. Yeah, I know. Sense. I don't know why that's the case. That makes sense. There we go. Okay. Hold on. Now, does that one go back to the screen? Because if it's full screen, I don't know if that breaks it. Hey, it looks fine. Well, it, works, it looks fine on yours. But oh, you're right. Alright, technical difficulties. We've never done this before. I'm sorry. It needs to be great, like in the future. It's new. I'm your guinea pig. Guys, eventually it'll be great. Is it? Sweet. Oh, it's broken before. Oh, is that you sending it, Rihanna? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of notifications. Okay. All right, so how do we want to do the lights? Uh, so top is really bright, bottom is really dark. Okay, this or this? So we'll keep it at this. All right, um, I guess we'll get started like 20 minutes later or so. Um, thank you for waiting, thank you for coming. Um, as you can see, this will teach you how to survive and thrive in project management. Quick question before we start. How many of you are either leading a team or have led a team before? Oh, good. So you've got a pretty good, pretty good spread. How experienced do you think you guys might be? How confident would you be if you had to be? Yeah. All right, never mind. <laughs> All right. So, itinerary for today. Um, we'll be going over a quick introduction. Um, to myself, that was a long one. Um, general notes, documentation, and organization. We're talking about key dynamics um, and then tools and trades and things that we might use uh, without a lot of the stuff you guys have seen before, but just some more uh, ways that you might be able to use them and find notes. Um, this one will be really quick. Don't want to waste any of your time. Um, any more than I have already, yet, anyway. Um, but who am I? Um, I am Yoon Lee, second year CM student. Um, I am the project leader of Walker Ace Knox. Um, Y'all are on my team. Shout out. Um, 
some somewhat useless info. I have five years of experience leading projects, but that's not particularly <coughs> important. Um, pretty introverted. I actually hate talking. I don't know why I'm here. Um, but yeah, so I want to talk about a little bit about what you're doing here when you manage a project. Um, and we're all going to, let's just go ahead and assume that we're working as a group, um, not just as an individual. That's not really project management at that point that would become like an issue. Um, but first thing to remember, and this is something people seem to really forget a lot, but you are not alone on a project. What that means is that when you are on a team, you are carrying the burden of responsibility to finish whatever you are doing along with every single other person on that team. Um, in the heat of things, when deadlines come close, it's really easy to think of just your tasks. And if you think like, oh, if I finish my task, then I mean, obviously, everybody else should be working towards finishing theirs. If you have a perfect world, that'd be great. Um, but we do not live in a perfect world, um, and more likely than not, you will be depending. You will be more dependent on your team members than they are dependent on you. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, other things I would like you to remember is that understanding and consideration will go a long way. Uh, what do I mean by this? I mean it's pretty straightforward. My little funny kind of stuff, French is magic and stuff. But um, what I mean is that when projects the core of what the core of what project management is built off of what it is all going to be, what your fundamentals are going to be is communication. Um, you are working with other human beings, not just yourself. I know that's like kind of wild. It's like most of us are super used to working in like a single room for like the hours on end, just talking to ourselves in like some insane days. But we are working with other humans. Um, understand that they may not they may do things differently from you. I mean come on, you all learned this in grade school. Um, but just keep that in mind as you continue forward. Um, I mean obviously you have tech, there's a lot of shit going on in our lives. We are quite busy people. Um, at least most of us are. Um, so keep that in mind when deadlines go wrong or if some task doesn't get done. Try to come to an understanding based off of that. Um, are there some basic rules to remember? Um, coordination, sympathy, consistency, integrity, honesty, and efficiency. Um, these are just some general um, philosophical things that I would like you guys to focus on uh, when you do for, when you are working with others, not just as a project manager, but as a project manager, something like that. Um, but when you are, whether you're a member of a team or leading a project, keep in mind that coordination is. Coordination, sympathy, consistency, integrity, honesty, and efficiency are what you want to use on a day to day basis. Um, coordination, obviously, you can't build a game if and no one knows what they're doing. Um, project leads, that's on your end. Your responsibility as team leader, and I'll be going over this later on in the slides, but your responsibility as team leader is to make, first and foremost, is to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing and things are getting done. That is the bottom line, the most important, most basic thing a project manager should be doing. That is what, that's why we have producers in this industry. Um, but yeah, sympathy, be a human being, please. Um, you know, your teammates have lives, your teammates have limits. Um, do not try to push them across <coughs> that. And, and I'm sure all of you guys are perfectly normal, perfectly empathetic human beings here. I mean, I hope. Um, otherwise, I'd be a little concerned. But, when exercising this rule of thumb, just keep in mind, and on, in your guys' in your guys's case, this is a little more relevant. But in, when you are dealing with a member who is finishing a task or anything like that, <coughs> try to keep in mind. Try not to overestimate their skills. Try to underestimate their skills. And I know that sounds a little rude, but when you're looking at it, when you as project leader are not only responsible for the work that you put out but the work that everyone else puts out as well. So if you overestimate one of your teammates and think that, oh, I'm sure you'll be able to finish, what, two characters, five animations, walk in the idle and attack in you know, two weeks or so, right? You'll be able to do that. <coughs> no, maybe ask them for a little more clearance, ask them about their schedule, ask them about you know, what's going on in their lives. Try to get to know them, try to get more info out of them so that you guys can understand what might, what other things might be going on that might hinder them. Um, consistency, please. Uh, this is probably the one that is broken the most often. I am guilty of this myself. Um, but consistency, anything that you do, 
in the in the process of trying to manage your project, do it regularly. Make it a habit. Um, consistency is consistency is absolute key when it comes to making sure that your members are following through with their instructions. If there is no consistency, there is no precedence as to what's been happening previously. So your team members have nothing to go off of. So if I say, oh, I'm going to be updating this game, uh, game design document, well, if that would be perfectly fine in the middle of development had I been doing this, say, ever since the beginning, right? And I expected every member to be updating that and looking at that as we go. But if all of a sudden I push upon my members, hey, we're really pushing through this game design document thing, you know? Um, I know it's November, I know like the demo's a week away, but I have a whole lot of updates to this thing. Maybe want to check it out. Well, they're kind of blindsided, right? This, this is holding your information. Um, if you do try to do something, try to do it regularly and try to keep it consistent. Um, integrity, as leaders, this is more of a PSA announcement rather than a overall judgment call. But integrity, please, you are not what the way I like to think of it is when you are managing a project, when you are lead, when you are a project lead, you are a servant to your teammates, not the other way around. Um, therefore, do not allow your own pride or hubris to get in the way of making sure that everyone else on your team is getting their best done. Um, because you are a team is only as good as the leaders. And if you are the leaders, well, it's going to give them a problem. Um, so yeah, just try to get in Try to have integrity. Honestly, pretty much the same thing. Do your best not to say one thing and then revert back on it to another person. The most common occurrence I see is usually when it comes to things like you know, scheduling or the specifics on a task. It's, it's usually something like, oh, hey, our meeting is going to be today. Um, when in reality, well, you know that? I'm not sure. Maybe you haven't spoken to the rest of your members because you that out as a quote. So try not to give out empty words. Try to give only concrete information to them. And if you do give that out, if you do give out any abstract info or things that might need more clarification, do your best to make sure that they understand that this is up in the air, that you yourself are not guaranteeing that anything is going to happen. Um, and this goes back into honesty. If anything happens, if you may know, they do not hate you, they will rather. And last but not least, this is the biggest no-brainer efficiency. Um, everyone needs to get work done. When in terms, since this is a game design related talk, we're going to be talking about it in relation to games. Um, efficiency in this case is going to be looking at each, you as a project manager need to be looking at every aspect of development. And we all know artists, the artist's workflow, programmer's workflow, writer's workflow, users' workflow, those are all totally different things. They don't always mesh together that easily. Um, Efficiency is probably going to be one of the things that you need to find. For instance, um, just in my team, um, currently I have Brandon. I have Brandon over here and Jack Lindsay over no here. They are acting as my kind of eyes and ears in the programming and art, uh, in the art groups respectively. Why? Because I myself, as project lead, cannot afford to go out to every single member and say, "Okay, what are we on? What are we doing? How do we do this?" Because you know. I'm only one man, and I'm going to do things way slower rather than having two people to help me out with that. So again, sometimes you have to give up some, sometimes to be the most efficient, you have to give up some responsibility, some weight in your act. Um, sometimes you have to give the agency to someone else. Um, but yeah, that's just some things I'd like to keep in mind when we're talking about working as a team collaboratively. Um, but moving on towards communication, um, notice the slides, names, papers, please, because your entire project is going to live and die on the document documentation it's written on. Um, game design documents, supplementary documents, any kind of Excel spreadsheets, um, Trello boards, Discord, all of the above. Do not hesitate to set up as much as you can. Um, the more info your team has, the more info you have at your disposal, the better it's going to be in the future, um, especially during things like post-mortems or things, or when something goes wrong during development, you have to know what went wrong. And, you know, most often, more often than not, I'll be talking about it, but hurting control is definitely something that goes into this uh, topic, making sure that we know what went wrong, we can look and see to make sure we know where that, uh, where problems start happening. But in other, in other cases,
is a documentation for artists, uh, making sure that they there is something that lets them know that this is the way that we need things done, this is how we're going to get it done, how we're going to go through it. Um, and I'll be showing you a little bit about how to set up a good, a good template for setting up a game design document um, later on as well. Um, but yeah, some things to keep in mind though. Readability, please, this is one of the most important things. No text walls. I know. Some of us just don't like being me. Please, at least learn the macros for bullets, bulleted lists, anything <laughs> that will make it easier on the eyes to read. No teammate is going to read just a massive single space block of text detailing the entire specifics of your character controls. No one will want to read that. That is more like reading a car manual. Um, remember, you know, like, do you remember in the like back in the day where like you pick up a DS game and you pick up something for a PlayStation and you open it up and it has this nice little instruction booklet and it have all those nice colorful controls on it? And they do want to read it, right? Yeah, do the same thing with your game design documentation. Make people want to read it. Um, I can't stress this enough. You, you can ask as many times as you'd like and if they just don't feel like it, they do it. Um, again, consistent management. What this means is Make sure that you are updating these constantly. Again, that ties back into the consistency as a in general. But in this specific case, if you have a Trello, use it. If you have Discord, use it. If you have anything that you need to regularly maintain and update with information, please do so. Um, I know it's really easy to get boggled down and, oh, but I don't have time to actually develop. Well, this is a problem. You're finding a battle that the rest of your team members can. Um, this is arguably going to save more people on your team than it will you. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're updating any info that you have, whether it be just a very slight one-off conversation with one of the co-leads in a Discord call at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Maybe open up a notepad, Google Keep, whatever you want, maybe a notepad, like write it on your hand or something, just to make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, we yeah, have make it habitual, again, same thing as consistent management, habitual. So what does that mean? Incorporate it into your team. Um, document, if you have to document it inside of your, document it inside of your game document, how it's part of your production. Let them know, like, hey, this, this, and that will be updated at these times of the week. Um, so keep checking in for details on that. <coughs> and not all, it won't be, up, it won't, and I'll be real with you, not every teammate is going to listen and say, yeah, they're not going to be always on the dot and say, okay, every Sunday, I'm going to be on the dot, I will be checking the program. It's not how it is. But if you keep that, if you put that out there, then more of the burden goes on them. You have given all the information that you can possibly give. Now it's up to your teammates to fulfill their end of the shit. Um, and I'll be speaking more on those dynamics in the next slide. Um, but yeah, keep track of work. This is a little more specialized. I want to keep it down. I know most of you know what Agile Sprint is. Um, we used it before. If you don't know what Agile Sprint is, doing, um, please use it. Um, Agile Sprint is just a way of organizing your time, your, your work timeline in what we call sprints. It can be a week, two weeks max, usually. Um, and you'll have a, you'll document what tasks you need and you'll log what time, you, how long you worked on certain tasks during that sprint. And then once the sprint is over, you'll just work on, move on to the next one. Um, Kanban boards, I'm probably pretty sure not all of you have heard about these. Kanban boards are basically what Trello is. Um, if you've ever used Trello, <coughs> Trello is just another way, of, it's just a simplified way of uh, version of the Kanban board. The Kanban board is a way of graphically detailing an agile script workflow. Um, so essentially you would have, and I'll be showing you this online on the Trello app for you guys. Um, but Essentially, it's a way for each team member to visually see which work, what work is being done at what stage in um, production each task is in, um, essentially. And prioritize. This is, I like to use a system called Moscow. Um, it's pretty easy to remember, but it goes as follows must, should, would, and could. Um, this is just another add on to an agile sprint workflow or Kanban. You can add tasks with this and just say must. Must finish during the sprint. Should? I should finish it during the sprint, but it's not going to be of major consequence. Um, and then would? I would finish it, but I likely don't have time, so I'll move it to the next sprint. 
Um, and then, of course, could is I definitely can. I would if I could, but I'll have to move it towards the end of the like that. Keeping things prioritized like this, let your teammates know which, which tasks are the most imminent. And oftentimes, if you don't label them, they'll pick something, they'll often work on things in out of chronological order. And when I say chronological order, I mean in terms of what should be implemented first in terms of what time you have. So for instance, if you've got a game and part of the workflow is, oh, we were working on a character control. Okay, great. Um, we need movement, we need firing controls, and we need VFX. I mean, <coughs> pretty straightforward. As for that, which one of these is the least important at the moment, probably don't need that VFX. Anyway. So you put that on wood. Um, must would likely be movement. You gotta have that move. You gotta see it move. Firing, maybe that would be sure. Depends on what your strength would look like and the schedule you can. Um, but just another quick, just an easy way to tag um, your priority speaking and let them know in which order to do things. Um, so this is what I'm talking about when it comes to dynamics. Um, so for you project leads in the room, myself included, these are some of the things you might want to keep in mind. Um, please. Be forceful but not cool. Um, sounds kind of like I'm speaking, it sounds like I'm trying to prevent you guys from being despots. That's not how it is. I know you guys are good people. What I'm saying is that when you guys have to, when there are moments in meetings or when there are moments in development where you really have to put your foot down, you have to have some, you have to put some level of weight to your words. You have to, be, you have to present yourself as someone who is going to take action if something doesn't happen. Um, and just not being cruel, it is a hard mind. It is a hard mind to draw. Um, again, that is it changes with every team composition. But the most general case scenario is to just do your best to be a human. Simple, simply put, actually, that it is the bottom one, the last one that you can do. Um, because so long as you keep in mind that you are the, you are just another, you are just the same as you know, the next program on your team. Then everyone, no one is going to hate you for making a tough decision. Rather, they will respect you. Um, if there is a point in the game where someone you're talking to a designer who has just really put in a lot of hard work and effort into what they've done, um, or some artist who has worked really hard in the character control and has a lot of character assets, and you know, production just isn't going to let it happen, you've got to cut it. Well, this would be, if, you have, if you have been following that kind of mindset of being open and honest with your team and being level with them, then they're not going to come in. They're not going to come get you. They're not going to put the team. No, they're rather going to tell you, thank you, I don't have to work on something further. Now, can I work on something that is actually going to be the game? Um, it sounded a little bad when I said that out loud, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, delegate. Delegation. Not enough people do this. Um, so many product leads think, well, we, we seem to have this misconception that as we we are going to burden, shoulder the burden of the entire game onto our shoulders. Not quite how it works. Uh, if that were the case, then why did you have a team set up at the end of that pitch? Um, there was no need for that, right? Because you obviously just do the whole game yourself. Um, delegate. And when I say delegate, delegate with make edu be educated when you delegate. Um, get to know your teammates, understand their skill level, Understand what their schedules look like. Get to know them on a personal level. You got it. Um, if, you're, if you really want to get down and dirty with that, but delegate that work with uh, with relevant knowledge to who you delegate to. Um, you do not want to be delegating work to someone who is not ready for it. Not ready to tell you because you're uncomfortable, you're shy, or you're just not confident that you'll have a place to come down. Um, so remember. They're just, you, you should, they are very much, not every team member is going to be as open as they should be with you, and it is your job to go hunt down that information, because it is perfect. Um, and don't run from responsibility. Um, and just to make sure that you can this upon yourself, you best hope you finish it. Um, teams, team members, that is. Um, you have a voice. Don't forget that. If your, team, if your team leader is making a misguided choice or they just aren't fully, they just don't seem like they're fully there at the meeting or something, speak up. Um, 
you are only doing this. Like, don't worry about things like, oh, but I mean, people are going to look, look bad at me. They're going to look down on me or something. I'm not all the time talking. You're on the team. That's the qualification. You can watch that around like um, Be consistent. Consistency. I can't stress this enough. But for a team member, this is, you also have burden. You, you carry the same burden. Um, arguably slightly, slightly easier because you are all <coughs> handling it together. But be consistent in your work. If it's really nice for a project to you know that some if they give somebody a task, it's going to take them a certain amount of time to do it. And knowing that amount of time is going to make things a lot easier for them. Um, so just do your best, try to be consistent, attend meetings on time, or if you're late, don't be late. Um, Simple as that, fix it. Um, get to work on that. But yeah, stay consistent and stay committed. Um, I understand that. So I, a little background on that. Um, I come from the state. I have a new here. So um, I was president of Aurora Game Development Club, which is basically Aurora System, a uh, sister organization uh, created by a friend. Of the um, but we in our our kind of our member our member setup is where when we set up teams, members are also members carry an equal amount of burden to the project team. Therefore, teams must stay together. Um, there is less hopping off and on. Teams. There's less double dipping, and more often than not, there is more member retention. But um, in this case, whether it be whether it be in a war, whether it be in the media, whether it be in the real world, stay committed. Um, just on a practical level, I, potential potential uh, people who are looking to hire you are going to like people who stick to a project and finish it. Um, that's just a lot of principle. So if you have entered a project and you know maybe you didn't get to put your fancy idea in, or maybe you didn't get the rule, you didn't get the level of responsibility you wanted. Well, first, you have a voice, so you should use it. And tell them that. Tell them how you feel about that. And two. That's okay, but what you're here for is to get better. So in the end, making sure that you stay committed and at least gain something from that project is better than just up and quitting and just you know, going off and self um, But yeah, keep talking and nobody explodes. This is kind of really this is really something to as well. Don't stop talking to each other. Um, there are moments where like you have exams. You'll be like rushing, you'll be rushing, you'll be like rushing, starting to do it again, you'll be just quoting five days in the box, and you'll be like, oh, I'm doing it. And you'll go, hmm, at least take a look. I guarantee nine times out of ten, it's going to be something that you're going to be ready to do, uh, you're going to be not see later on. Um, but a project lead, project leads, I mean, sure, they want to talk to you. I mean, you're all, you're helping them on their project, but it's not like they don't speak to you without a purpose. They're not trying to waste your time. When they speak to you, they're giving you information that is very much relevant to what you're doing. Um, they want your success is as linked to their success as what they're doing. So they have a very vested interest in you guys doing well. Um, so please check your discords, check your trellos, check any route of communication you have with any other member of your team. Just making sure that everyone knows what everyone else is doing. Just it's everything. No more asking questions on, oh, what did you do the last meeting? Um, well, we had these notes, ask if everybody was there, that's how you came here, you know, lots of different ways to get info. Um, and work with agency. What does that mean? So, team leader, project leads, and managers are not going to be there all the time to give, to force feed you their vision for the game. Um, much too much to do that. Also, that's a matter. Um, but team members, a burden, there is a burden placed on you guys to fulfill your end of creating that vision of the game. Um, and this is what it means to work with agents. Um, there will sometimes be moments where not all the details are there, or the project team leader just isn't able to fully communicate with you. If that is the case, you as, team mem you as a team member are going to do their best to make sure that you can at least get close to what they think so that you can at least 
build off of each other and just ping pong on. Um, at the very least, that will get you something rather than, hmm, I need more info. I'll wait for the minute. Or, oh, I need more info. Yes, I can. That's a problem. Don't do that. Work with agency. Make your own decision. Take matters into your own hands. If you don't have that. Um, yeah. Oh, God, I hate walking like this. Um, tools of the trade. This is a fancy part. Um, so obviously, Trello, who here has me? That's okay, guys. Um, I'll be showing sure you that in just a second, anyway. Um, Trello, and <coughs> another thing, who here has heard of Hacking Party? Okay, so I get to show something cool. Um, Hack and Plan. Um, Hack and Plan and Trello are basically kind of project management hubs, if you will. Um, they contain Kanban boards, they contain calendars, they contain ways to work on the past, they contain ways to make sure that everyone needs a making sure just checking up on the status of the game. Trello and Happy Plan have solutions to those. Uh, they're great general project management solutions, not just in game development. Not Hacker Plan, though. Hacker Plan is definitely good. Um, Discord and Slack. Um, I don't know about Slack, but I know, most, I know pretty much all of you have Discord. Um, you don't use Discord, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, messages, um, messages, pigeon, whatever you want. Um, like, just make sure that everyone's talking to each other. Kind of no brain. Doodle and when is good. Most of you have seen one of one or the other. Just making sure that everyone is open on a certain day of the week at certain times, making sure that everyone's able to connect with each other. Um, just in general, that is a good practice. Use it um, when needed. Dropbox and Drive. Do I really need to explain to this, guys? Um, probably don't. Um, making sure that you're out your files and access to back up. Um, GitHub, version control. There are many other types of version control software out there. I'm just going to talk about GitHub because I know how to use GitHub. Um, and everyone else, most of you are probably use GitHub. So I don't that much to um, but version control. I have, I have been, I have been, I have spoken to many, many <coughs> professionals there. And the first thing when I ask them, what is it that you are looking for? First thing they tell me is if you do not know what I'll ask them, they, one dude literally told me if you don't know, if I ask you what version control is and you don't have an answer for me, I'm walking out the room. Um, please understand that version control is a very, very, very important practice, not just in games, but in general software and computer clients. So um, just make sure that you're updating your committee um, to make sure that you guys are And if not, well, we have. Um, but I can go ahead and oh shoot okay hmm. cool so Trello first um, this is a Trello um, it's really fancy isn't it? so most of you have seen this before this is a team board um, Trello uses two different setups you can just have one singular board or you can have teams that can hold multiple boards like this one it's super nice. Um, this one's team, this team's name is Example Team, and its description is Team Team. Wow, how intuitive. Um, you can invite members. I believe there is no cap to there, yeah, there is no cap to the number of members you can add for a free Trello license. Um, but if you have like Trello Gold, like me and Rihanna now do, we can we can do cooler stuff with it. But um, the way I like to, the way I this is a good template that I usually use for setting up my um, project, uh, my projects and my teams. Um, generally, I will have a general information board, graphics, design and writing, music and sound, and programming. This is obviously for a student team. This would probably break apart if used at a professional level. Um, although I have seen indie, smaller indie deck teams use a similar system before. Um, so going into general information, oh, whoops, okay. Sorry, I don't know how to use a Mac, so like, my apologies. Um, but yeah, so usually in general information, I'll have something like a project overview. i will have a description of the game, talk about what the game is going to be like, general vision ideas, um, and then some links to documentation um, in general, and then announcements. Um, occasionally, I will add another list that is for milestones, things that 
we definitely need to do. For instance, last year, Aurora doesn't do milestones like VGDev does. Instead, our milestones are based off of when we present. Um, so mine was basically one pre-check, one proof of concept. Um, there was a proof of concept build. There was an assets. There was an assets implementation build. There was a SiegeCon build. There was a DreamHack build, ECGC build, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, usually I will have, that is how I set up general information. Um, I will go into programming first because programming. Um, so generally I will have it set as this, um, this general layout here. It varies by team. More often than not, this is much, much larger when I'm working with other people. But this is just basically the most fundamental version of it. Um, requests. This is from any member. This is usually a this is a list in which where any other member from other boards can enter the programming board and say, "Hey, I need you to fix this. I need more clarification on this, or I need this task to be updated." Um, and they'll copy and paste whatever they need into that card for this board. Um, bug log, kind of self-explanatory. Um, you track bugs here. Um, Q which is essentially the lineup of work for that sprint. So this week, we are going to do this, this, and that, and it would all be located on the queue list. Um, and once all that is down, it would, uh, members can add things, drag and drop things to their in progress. Let's just say task one, right? So if I am, I don't know, Ben, and I am working in, if this is my in progress list, I can just drag and drop it over, and wow, it's mine now. Um, really simple, but yeah. And then once I have it done, I'll move it to completed, and then once it is completed, it will sit until whoever is managing the Trello comes in and cleans it up nice and tidy. Um, and there is no true dedicated delete option. Trello will actually just archive everything you try to delete, so you will always have some form of history um, that you can view when you are looking at changes in your Trello boards. Um, graphics, oh, whoops, there we go, yeah. Graphics, same thing, requests, this is a little different. Requests, assets, queue, in progress and completed. The only thing that's different is assets, where this is likely going, this is where you would dump, you know, your artist, your assets, Dropbox, uh, Dropbox link, your drive, any concept work that you've done in the past, or anything that just needs to be pulled up on a dime. Um, that's where you put it, and then here is an example of what a task might look like. So like idle animation slime, right? We'll have a description of what they need to draw with specific details. Um, with a due date, you can set due dates, you know, pretty standard stuff. You can set due dates, access times, whenever you want them to be, um, and then have checklist, uh, gibberish in this case. Um, but yeah. There's a lot of other, there are a lot of other features like labels. You can label things in any which way you want. I usually use labels with the Moscow system. Um, so I'll label it must, would, should, and could. Um, but yeah, yes, question. Uh, once you something, how do you see it? There is a activity board here. <coughs> there is activity on the side here. You will be able to see it and then you can just take a look and pop it back up if you have to. Um, you can just revive it from the dead. It's your graveyard. Um, but yeah, music and sound, much the same. Um, most of these boards have a very similar setup to them. Um, I won't be going into the rest of them because they're basically the same setup. Um, again, with every team, it's going to look a little different um, depending on whether or not your game is, depending on the needs of your game. If it is a music rhythm game, we know which boards are going to be more heavily used than others. Um, if it is a text-based game, I don't think we'd be needing graphics um, at all. But yeah, just some general ways that you can set up, um, that you can keep track of this. Um, and also, this is basically, when I said Kanban boards, this is a standard Kanban board setup. This is exactly how you would set it up normally. Um, it's just, a, you're just wrapping it up in a fancy package and making it look good. Um, but yeah, so I... Currently, since Hacking Plan is not like here, I will just go to their website and show you what Hacking Plan is. Hold up. Eee. Come on. You can do it. There we go. So, project, man um, project management for game development. Basically, um, 
This is just Trello, super souped up for game development. Um, this has a lot more in-depth stuff. You can keep a living, breathing game design document just in Hack and Plan. Um, it won't. It doesn't need to be confined to the mortal coil of just one Google Doc. It can be spread out across this entire board. Um, it you can try. You can log hours that you've worked on a task. Members can take a look at things and link things to other members throughout uh, inside the interface itself. It is super comprehensive. A lot of the features you might not use, but um, it is an option for those of you who, can, who would like to experiment with other uh, tools of the trade out there. Um, but yeah, and this is free. This is free software and you can pick it up whenever you'd like. Um, but yeah. And final notes. So you will have issues. Don't bottle it in. Y'all gonna get mad. It's gonna be rough. We're gonna have fun. It ain't gonna be fun. Just feel free to scream when you need to scream. Um, I being angry is only bad if it's hidden. Um, you show, you tell someone, I don't like what's happening here, or you know, something's really frustrating me. We can fix that problem right now. Most of the time, you can just fix that right now. And you'll talk to your team lead, and they'll be like, oh, shoot, didn't even know. I can fix that. Um, but if it's you know, something like, if you just keep it bottled in and say, you know, and it slowly boils into, oh, my God, I hate this guy. God, I hate this guy. I hate his looks. I hate his face. I mean, what, who's, help, who's that helping at that point? Nothing. It's just pure old fashioned, good old-fashioned hate. That's not good. Um, but yeah. Friendship and work do not always mesh. This is, I think this is something that most of you have learned naturally throughout the year, throughout the years, um, working in game development or just working professionally in general. Friendship and work do not always go together as nicely. Sometimes, in order to be a good project lead, you gotta be a bad friend. Um, you gotta assign work that, you know, sometimes maybe you might put some burden on them. But that's what you have to remember. That that's what everyone signed up for. Um, no special treatments here. I try to be as egalitarian, slave driver-ish as I could be. Um, no, that was a total joke. Don't, if you're on my team, I'm not like that, I swear. Um, but yeah, take care of each other. Y'all are going to be spending a semester together. If you're a professional, you're going to be spending years together. Um, you're going to be a family. This industry is not that big. And, like This industry is not even, like, we're still pretty small globally anyway. Take care of each other. We're one big happy family. Like, like Karik said, we got to like try to encourage community. Don't pull yourselves away. Um, just remember that everyone else is just as scared of people as you are. Um, I, I find that that helps. Um, but yeah, stay, stay professional. Work before play. The only reason I'd see you guys forgetting this would be during a call where all of your teammates are your best friends and you just really want to talk about what happened during the week instead of actually getting to the call. Get to the call. And don't don't worry about all that other stuff until, like, enter the trance, hypnotize yourself if you have to. Finish that call. Get all that out of the way. Then you can go and, you know, eat and speed all you'd like, um, as you wish. But yeah, fail together. And the most important thing, fail together, learn together, fail forward and fail fast, however you want to call it. None of us are experts. I don't, if there is someone in this field who has ever called themselves an expert, they're probably a novice. Um, so... Everyone here is trying to get learn something out of the game. Uh, might as well try and teach everyone as much as you can. You might not be good at one thing. They might need help in the one thing that you are good at, though. Um, so do your best. This is literally why I'm standing up here. Um, so do your best. Spread the love. Oh, that's not a simple thing. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that is it for my talk. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk.